Hello everyone, this is Hoda Ganji. In the last video, we started modeling a small warehouse. Uh, we created the mass. Now we are ready to place the structural elements. I'm going to type TW to go back to tab view. Then we're going to continue from step four. Place the structural columns on grid intersections, columns height as per section and details. So let's first see it in 3D. We have eight columns. This is the column type here, okay, and the height, we can follow section 1 for the height. How about we also draw section 1 in our Revit model? So as you see, section 1 is kind of like this, right? So I'm going to go to level 1, I'm going to go with view, section, I'm going to draw a section like this. If you prefer for the section bubble to be on the right side, you can change it as you wish. Section line here, there is a split. We can do the split segment kind of like this. Okay, so this is our section one. I can move this a little bit inside, a little bit inside, and I can go to my section one view. Sections are added here. Very good. Uh, how about I go with level 1 and section 1, WT, side by side. Uh, and here it seems that the grid doesn't go all the way down uh, to the underside footing. So I'm going to move this a little bit lower so the grid is extended. Okay, now we are going to have a structure column. So I'm going to go with structure column. Uh, the column type is already imported here. The column type is uh, HSS203, this one, uh, which is exactly what we have here. I might go with at grids and I want to select the window. So all these grid intersections are selected, finish, and uh, it says that we cannot see them there. Right? So we should see why we don't see our sections in level 1. So maybe here I just want to quickly bring my 3D view. I see the columns in 3D, but we don't see it in level 1. So I'm going to draw a window like this. Go to filters, check in on, only select the search our columns. And let's see, we want the columns. Pair the drawing here, as you see. We want them to go from level 1 to roof a uh, plane. So I'm going to go with level 1 as for the base level and I want to go with roof plane as for the top. In addition, see at the bottom the column goes 400 millimeters lower than level 1. You can see it here in section and in the detail 2 here, if this is level 1, column goes 400 below level 1. So while the columns are still selected, to base level I'm going to assign negative 400. Let's see the top of the columns. The top of the columns are slightly different. So if this is our roof plane, uh, it seems that we have a beam which is 300 millimeters. So for now, I'm going to move all of them 300 millimeters lower than the roof plane. So I'm going to go with a roof plane moving down. So it's going to be negative 300 here. Apply. Okay, let's go to section one. Uh, so why don't we see the columns here? First, make sure in the section level of details is set to fine, right? Otherwise, you don't see the column. Then we need to move this up. And we can also hide crop region now if you want. So, uh, overall, it seems correct. However, here, uh, as you see, on grid 1 and 3, the top of the beam is exactly uh, on the level. However, because of the slope of the roof, the top of this beam is 100 millimeters lower. So the columns which are on grid 2, which is these two columns, I can draw a window like this, filter, 
check known the two structure columns. Uh, the top offset should move another 100 millimeters lower. So this is going to be negative 400. It's affected in the section you see. How about grid number four? On grid number four, basically the top of the beam and the top of the column is 100 millimeters over uh, the roof plane. So we'll go back here. I'm going to select the columns on grid four like this. Filter, check known, only the two columns. Instead of negative 300, it should be negative 300 plus 100, as you see here, which is negative 200. Apply. So this is how the columns work. At step 5, we're going to draw the beams. Let's see the beams. In 3D view, we see that the beam type is UB305 by 165 by 40. Uh, those are the beams. Right? And we have two beams on the mezzanine level. Let's see it in section. On section is exactly uh, on top of the column. And if we assign it to the roof plane and work with it, it's just going to exactly match with the columns. Uh, so that's why instead of level 1, I want to go to the roof plane. And uh, I, I want to change this to fine level. If it's not, change it to fine level. Then we're going to go with beam. The beam is already loaded. And I want to draw it basically from the intersection here to intersection here. If you are not sure where it goes, uh, let me show you how underlay here works. Maybe I can um, go to underlay in the view settings, change this to mezzanine level. Now you see the columns that we did not see before. Basically, it should go till the center of the column, right? So I'll go with the beam and I can draw it from the intersection here to the intersection here, right? Now in the section, you see that the beam is drawn and uh, you see that its level is roof plane and it's exactly ending on this level, which is uh, roof plane. Uh, in section, if you want to also make a, an elbow here, you can do so. So it's a little bit nicer. So uh, the beam that we have, I want to select it and I want to copy it uh, so that we have it on all our grids, grid number two, three, four. On grid 2, we need to move it 100 millimeters lower because of the roof slope, as you see here. So I want to select the beam on grid number 2. To the start level and end, le uh, end level offset, I want to assign negative 100. Let's also see it here. It's a little bit uh, higher than where it should be. So I want to assign negative 100. Now one end is good, the other one is not. So remember to assign negative 100 to both ends. Now this is correct, you can see in section 2. Uh, this is already good. And the last one, we need to move this 100 up on both ends. 100 millimeter, 100 millimeters. And now the beams are good. Let's go back to the section. Let's not forget about the beams here, uh, which are on mezzanine level. If I go to my call out, the view number six here, we see that in mezzanine, uh, it's also the same type of the beam, UB0516540. Uh, that's exactly what we had. So. These two further beams, this one, which in section is this one and this one on mezzanine level, if we check it, we should place it around mezzanine level and then drop it by some values, right? So I want to go this time to my mezzanine level and we already see some columns and everything is good. And I want to place beams. I'm going to go with beam and we're going to go from here to here. 
you see the beam uh, here that's good if I click on it it says that it's on mezzanine level uh, let's check the height offset from mezzanine level we need to refer to this detail this is mezzanine level 100 millimeters is the thickness of the floor then there is 64 millimeters till where the beam is so 164 is how much the beam is dropped so that it can hold uh, the joist and the floor right that 64 here is the thickness that we need for joist so 164 and this is going to be the same number on both so i'm going to drop this let's see it also in this other view by negative 164 millimeter negative 164 millimeter apply let's see it on section this is exactly how we want it and then i can go to mezzanine and copy the beam to grid 4 here so now we took care of all our uh, beams and columns okay we are ready to take care of the joists next the joist or the beam system is basically the same thing let's first see that on 3d uh, we have joists on the roof level and on mezzanine on the roof level it seems that it's every 1400 millimeters and the type is 20k5 and it's uh, exactly on the two beams two uh, beams here uh, basically we need to do it per, per span so one on this span one on this span and so on you can also check it here if we select the beam the joist slope would be adjusted accordingly so I'm going to roof plane first I'm going to go with beam system so if we scroll down the beam type is here it's telling me that it is 20k5 that's exactly what the drawing indicates another thing we need to check is fixed spacing as discussed is 1400 on the roof level so I want to change this 900 to 1400 apply and here it gives me the option to pick the supports so I want to first pick support 1 and 2 the good thing about picking the support is that it's going to automatically adjust that uh, slope thing and we also going to pick this line and this line and then I can just trim trim and we can check the box let's see it on section I forgot to change the beam direction so I'll go back edit boundary the beam direction is gonna be like this check the box again now as you see here the slope should have been adjusted if you see on the section here the slope is adjusted and it's exactly on top of that beam okay so let's continue let's try it again here so roof plane beam system settings are right because we just adjusted them uh, I want to go with sketch beam system pick the supports which is beam on grid 2 beam on grid 3 uh, pick the lines which is this one and this one trim the area beam direction click on this line check the box double check on section that exactly ends on the beam that is correct remember that this is set to fine level of details last uh, span beam system sketch same settings support support pick line pick line trim the edges we need a closed rectangle beam direction check the box check it on 3d let's then take care of the beams on mezzanine level the difference is that 
it's 900 uh, every 900 millimeters let's see it on this view it's exactly on top of flat beam so I can go to my mezzanine level again I want to go with what structure beam system pick the supports boundary should be completed by picking lines trim trim as we discussed the only difference is that spacing is 900 excuse me 900 apply check the box it seems that uh, some some place here the trim I didn't do it exactly correctly so continue trim it again and then check the box oh I forgot about the direction so edit boundary uh, beam direction one click here that's now where you see it correctly now and uh, if you get a quick dimension here DI you're gonna see that we uh, we have exactly 100 millimeters for the floor thickness so now our section one uh, exactly matches with what we have on the drawing here so we took care of step four or five we'll continue the rest in the next video uh, if you want to go back to your tab views you can use TW and uh, just as before if you want to close in active views because we have too many views open just click on close in active views uh, that's it for this video uh, please like and subscribe for more videos thank you so much